Unexpected Uses of Computational Photography. This is Mac Voices. Mac Voices is supported by Collide. Get important, timely, and relevant security recommendations for your Mac right inside Slack. Try all of Collide's features on an unlimited number of devices free for 14 days, no credit card required, at collide.com slash macvoices. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Apple community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, this is part two in a two-part conversation with Jeff Carlson about a new column he's writing uh, about computational photography. This time, we get into some examples of where you might not expect to see computational photography, but it is there, and it is very important. Let's go back and let Jeff do the talking. So tell me if this is a good example of computational photography. Um, Last year, I contracted a case of poison, and... Ah. I didn't, I, yeah, and I didn't know what kind it was. I'm sorry. And yeah, well, I'll go with me on this. There's, there's a point. Um, okay. I, All right. I down, downloaded one of these apps that claims to be able to identify, you know, what it is that, you know, you, you, what plant you are looking at. Oh, yeah. And in fact, I think they've built some of this into the iPhone uh, software now. I haven't tried it yet. But I was yeah. amazed at, you know, not only did it identify what I needed it to identify, but also that I'm, I'm walking all over my yard, you know, taking pictures and seeing, oh, this is what this is, because I am not um, a botanist by any any degree. Um, you know, yeah. if, it's, if it's green, that's fine. That's that, all I need to know about it. <laughs> um, and it, 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 it amazed me, you know, just how, how accurate this was, because, you know, it would pop up things, you know, tell me not only what the plant was, but, you know, what kind of soil it grows in and, you know, what you can expect mm-hmm. from it and all. And so, and I, I thought, you know, this is really fascinating, and it's all coming through the camera. Is that computational photography? Is that what they're doing with the photos of the of the plants? It is, yeah, yeah. So that's that's like a, another area of of uh, AI and and computational photography, um, because you know it's it's using pattern recognition to look at at the distinctive uh you know shape of the leaf or the distinctive color and shape of the of the flower petals um you you mentioned the iphone um you can go and take a picture of something like this and in the photos app there's little there's little eye uh like eye in a circle but you tap that and you get information about the about the the photo itself um if the iphone has detected something else about it you'll see like a, a couple of little like star you know, sparkles around the eye uh, you tap that and then it says oh th- there's a plant that's been identified and you tap that and it will tell you what that plant is and then you know link to the wikipedia article about it um, it does that for like, landmarks and things like that too um, one of my favorite examples of this uh this is going to also going to be like a you know, stick with me for a minute. Um, there was a an article I want to say it's in the New Yorker. I'd have to look it up. Um, in Japan, the way that you order pastries is you you basically like pick a bunch of different pastries that you want, and they're all individually wrapped, and you put them on a tray, and then you go to check out. And the the person who is working the cash register has to like know what all of these things are, and and tally up what you have, and uh, you know, and, and then you you pay for it. Well, that was inefficient, and so at some point, um, a guy I think I can't remember if he was like a a bakery owner or just a researcher or, so, or something. Um, he invented an algorithm that. Um, what you would do is you would take all of these these pastries and you put them on a tray and you put it underneath a little uh, camera and the camera takes a look and based on the shapes and colors of all the pastries, it, you know, in a flash knows that you have, you know, this kind of croissant and a chocolate croissant and a Danish and a, you know, whatever. And so, you know, rather than one person having to manually do this slower, this AI would, would look at it uh, and, and do it much quicker and sometimes more accurately. Okay, so why do we care? It turns out that a tray of pastries can also kind of resemble 
a slide of cells. And so they took this algorithm, um, which I think they called it uh, pastry AI. I'm forgetting the detail, sorry. But they, they, they took this and adapted it. So now this algorithm that was designed to pick out uh, uh, pastries on a tray is now being used to identify cancer cells with 99% accuracy. So you take a sample and it looks at all the cells and it says, oh yeah, you know, these right here, th these are cancer cells. And it's doing that because of, of machine learning and what it knows about the shapes of different cells and things like that. And it all started with, you know, just the desire to make checkout of pastries a little bit faster. So I don't know that, that was definitely a little sidetrack, but it, it blows my mind because it's, it's talking about like these very same things. It's not just about how to make your images, you know, a little bit better or brighter or, uh, you know, being able to say, uh, you know, identify a sky and make the sky a little bit more dramatic, but just in the sky portions. There are a lot of different ramifications. Um, one of the things that I wrote about in my column was um, there's software that will do uh, culling of your photos. And that, that helps you like sort which ones are, um, you know, which ones are good, which ones are bad. They're, it's really tailored to events like weddings or uh, event photography. And in that case, you're going to end up with, you know, maybe thousands of, of photos. Let's say, you know, 3,000 photos after a, a day of shooting a wedding. Well, you run it through this software and while you're doing something else, it looks at all of these images and it can say, oh, all right, in these images, uh, people had their eyes closed. So maybe those are ones that you don't want to use as your picks. Uh, in these other images, uh, you know, everyone's looking at the camera or most people are looking at the camera or this one's out of focus and this one is underexposed. And so the idea is it will let you then take a look at what it deems are the, you know, the good pictures and then you're spending a lot less time going through every single image. You know, that has nothing to do with actually editing the photos, but it's using AI to recognize things like faces and whether eyes are open or closed or whether someone's head is turned or whether they're out of focus to help you sort through all those. So we're talking about computational photography, and I think it's really interesting that part of our discussion has focused on the photography part. F some of it has focused on the computational part, especially the pastry uh, example, and and frankly the uh -huh. you know the eyes open or closed example. Um, and it just you, you don't realize how powerful this is, or maybe where it could take you, until you have the tool and say, "Gee, I wonder if it could do this." If it can identify what kind of plant it is that's growing in my yard that gave me poison, or if it can identify a cancer cell, you know that's. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, my thing was pretty. You know, it's, it's pretty mundane, but cancer cells are not mundane. So yeah, this. You know, it's there. There are a lot of different aspects to this. Jeff, maybe I'm showing my bias here toward the iPhone, but are we seeing? Yeah. Um, are we seeing computational photography capabilities being built more into DSLRs and, and other kind of dedicated cameras? We're starting to. Um, it's It's been sort of curious that, that we haven't seen a whole lot of that. And I think some of that is, is technical. Um, I know that doesn't really mean anything, but... Um, you know, one of the advantages... So I, I mentioned earlier with the iPhone... Um, you know, we're talking about uh, very limited hardware. Uh, we have you know very small sensors. Um, the the megapixel count on iPhone lenses, I think, is still twelve megapixels. Um, not very much compared to most of the the mirrorless and DSLR cameras now. Um, but what that means is it doesn't have to deal with as much data, and so Apple can take its uh, you know its sensors and add a dedicated coprocessor 
that can read that information quickly and analyze it and do all of the, the computational things that we've been talking about. With more traditional cameras, I'm going to say, um, you have larger sensors, which means you just have massively larger amounts of data, and therefore you don't have as much time for for each you know millisecond of data of what's on the on the sensor to be you know sent to the processor and analyzed and then sent back. Um, as technology is improving and as as processors are improving and as companies are now realizing that you know hey this is a a competitive advantage that we can include, we're seeing a bit more of that. So a lot of the things that that we are seeing in cameras in the last couple of years have been like much better autofocus, for example, um, being able to pick out uh, like a person's face and specifically focus on like their left or their right eye. Because when you're shooting people, oftentimes you want to focus on, you know, have their eyes in focus because that's what as, as viewers were naturally drawn to is to see someone's eyes. Well, take that one step further. Now, a lot of the, the newer cameras are using AI machine learning technologies so that you can then switch to a autofocus uh, specifically for birds or cars or animals. So if you're a birder and you want to take a picture of of you know whatever i'm not a birder so i can't even i'm not gonna even try to (laughs) say you know different types of birds but you know um you have to sort of sort of picture picture what a bird photographer is like you've got somebody they probably have like a massively large lens because you need to to you know focus on something that's really far away and you know a bird in flight is a bird moving quickly and when you're dealing with long zooms then you know every little motion tends to uh you know make it harder to focus on something and so just just focusing on a bird can be really difficult well now your camera can look at that and say all right well that's a bird i'm just going to focus on that and i'm going to focus on the bird as it you know flies through the frame and so even as you are you know, holding this, this massive camera, massive lens, and you're moving the camera, the software still knows, okay, that's a bird in motion. I'm just going to track that. And that is because it knows what a bird is. And you know, even closer up, it knows where a bird's eye is, and you can focus on that. So you end up with a better hit rate than you normally would have. Uh, you know, before you sort of set it to high burst mode and you shoot a whole bunch and you hope that one or two or maybe five of those actually has the bird uh, in focus in the position that looks the best when its wings are outstretched. Well, now there's more likelihood of that and you have better things to choose from. So we're seeing some of it. It's, it's, It's not nearly to the point where the iPhone is. And I think that's partially because, um, you know, the, regular cameras didn't have to deal with that. Like it didn't really need to take a look and say, Oh, is this a landscape? And maybe I need to, you know, work on different areas of this because I know that it's a landscape, but we're definitely starting to see it because not only is it a, you know, a a competitive field, but you have so many people now who will take a picture with their iPhone and just expect that the, that the camera is going to know how best to process this. And if they are so used to doing that on their iPhone that does such a good job, and then they go and they buy a $500, $1,200 camera, and that camera is not giving them as good a shot as the iPhone, well, then that's that's bad for the camera manufacturers. So they're starting to incorporate this, but there are technical hurdles to making that happen. And I think, I feel like we're sort of cresting a little bit on um, the 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 capability so that we're probably going to see a lot more of these going forward as the manufacturers realize that this is a demand they need to to fulfill and they have the technological ability to do it. Today's Mac Voices is supported by Collide. 
Get important, timely, and relevant security recommendations for your Mac right inside Slack. Covide sends employees important, timely, and relevant security recommendations for their Linux, Mac, and Windows devices right inside Slack. How convenient. Collide is perfect for organizations that deeply care about compliance and security, but don't want to get there by locking down devices to the point where they become unusable. The more you lock down, the less usable the devices are, the more discontented the employees are, and the more they try to work around the lockdown. Instead of frustrating employees, Collide educates them about security and device management while directing them to fix important problems. Collide knows that end users are one of the most significant untapped resources and a key to solving the most challenging security issues. By involving users in the process, they are both educated and empowered to solve problems like setting passphrases on unencrypted SSH keys and uninstalling browser extensions that may be selling the browser history out the back door. Want to know more? Visit collide.com slash macvoices and try Collide with all of its features on an unlimited number of devices for free for 14 days, no credit card required. And be sure to enter your email when prompted to receive your free Collide gift bundle after trial activation. That's collide.com slash macvoices. K-O-L-I-D-E dot com slash macvoices. Collide.com slash macvoices. Thanks to Collide for supporting this week's Mac Voices. What you were saying about the bird was was really interesting to me. I, I'm thinking about, and and this is a very that's not a poor example. It's just the way it's been up to this point. Um, I have a couple dedicated cameras that have scene modes. So if you're going to go out yeah. to shoot a sunset, you're supposed to go you know hit the sunset button. And if you're going to go shoot, mm-hmm. I don't know, um, water sports, I'm supposed to hit the water sports button. And yeah, m- my impression always has been that, okay, that's trying to identify certain things that it kind of expects. So it's sort of a, a dumb kind of uh, machine learning because it's, it's not flexible and it, and it doesn't, it's not, it's not adapting to what I'm shooting. It's expecting me to do the adapting and tell it what I'm shooting. And, and then it, it makes the adjustment, it adjustments it thinks it should make. Is that, is that a fair assessment? Yeah, I think so. I mean, my impression has been a lot of those those modes have been sort of shortcuts. So, for example, um, you know, you want to go shoot water sports. Well, without any you know modes or whatever, um, what I think of is you're going to want a let's see. Well, you're shooting action. You're shooting water in motion. So you're going to want a high shutter speed, and you're probably going to want a you know a low aperture to let in a lot of light because you have to compensate for a high shutter speed otherwise everything's just going to be blurry and it will probably also need to increase your iso again to give you plenty of light to work with so that when you're you know shooting um you know, swimming or water polo or something like that you want things to be nice and crisp and in focus and so a lot of those modes were just the okay well I'm just going to, you know, set the shutter speed to one five hundredth of a second as the baseline. And that kind of gets you partially there. And so um, what I think, and I I would need to do more research about the the modes in in current cameras, but I think that they're doing a little bit more of the identifying the scene and being able to react, not just in general, I'm shooting water sports, but uh, you know, this, this car is moving really fast. And so, you know, we're going to, uh, increase the shutter speed based on that or adjust the ISO based on that. Um, I I haven't looked into that side of it yet enough to really definitively say, but it's certainly an area that is, is, is ripe for this sort of thing. There's, there's, I'm, <laughs> there's so many things I can see why you wanted to do the column. <laughs> there's about so this. much. Yeah, there, there is so much, and so many different angles from it, and some that we talked about here that I really had never taken that particular thing and associated it, it with computational photography, and yet it all fits together uh, under that heading. So, um, I think we could probably be here and figure out, uh, spend more time and figure out a lot more examples, but. 
um, hopefully we've given mm-hmm. folks a little bit a little bit more to think about that it's not just a buzzword but it's a very real thing making difference making a difference for folks at all levels you know from yes my from my poison right up to um, you know the uh, the diagnosis <laughs> of cancer and making your photos look good yeah. So. Um, Jeff, tell us where folks can can not only catch up. I know we said it at the top of the show, but where they can catch up with your column and catch up with everything else you do. Yeah, yeah. So um, it, it's published at uh, the, the column is called the Smarter Image. Uh, it's at Popular Photography, which is popphoto.com. And of course, you can always go to jeffcarlson.com, where I have links to all the stuff that I'm working on. Um, you know, the articles, podcast episodes. You know, all of that, uh, jeffcarlson.com is kind of the, the central hub. Uh, but do check out Popular Photography. Uh, you know, obviously, it's not just my column. There's a whole bunch of, of other great, great content on there. Uh, again, for all levels of photographers. Great. Jeff, thanks so much for the time. I, you know, again, really appreciate the, the education because I know I received one. I hope everybody else did. Yes, thanks for having me on. I, I Again, like, as you can tell, my brain can just sort of go on and on about these things because there's so much, uh, which is why I'm loving doing this column because there, there's so much I can just you know, look into a whole bunch of different things. And so it's, it's a great topic. And again, you know, I, I think it's changing things in such a huge way for most people. What that's going to look like is, hey, I can take better pictures and I didn't have to do anything different or I can edit pictures a lot faster and then sort of move on from there. So it's it's super cool. Great. We'll see you next time. All right. See you next time. Thanks, Chuck. Folks, I'm Chuck Joyner. This is Mac Voices. Again, I hope you've learned something. I learned a lot from Jeff, uh, a lot of things that I hadn't really thought about. Um, now they're areas I want to go out and explore a little bit, and some software that I want to go and play with, uh, download their demo versions, because I'm anxious to see what it can do, even for a lowly photographer like me. Until the next time, and as always, thanks for watching. Visit macvoices.com for show notes and to connect with Chuck on social media. Get involved in our Facebook group or like our Facebook page, and get more out of your Apple tech with Mac Voices Magazine, free on Flipboard and on the web. And if you find value in it all, consider supporting us through either our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash macvoices or by making a one-time donation via the PayPal link on our front page and in the show notes of each episode. You will join these fine people who help bring you Mac Voices. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com.